Highlands High School. I'm Ezra Plymouser here with my colleague Colin Cruzy. Today is Monday, November 11th, and I'm here with your afternoon announcements on this Veterans Day. After school detention today will be in Mr. Schlarman's room, number 103. Congratulations to the cross country teams who competed in the state championship this Saturday in Lexington. The girls team won the state meet for the second year in a row and the boys finished in third, their highest finish the last eight years. Team members include Chloe Gastrite, Sydney Osage, Osage, Molly Mearns, Lauren Osage, uh, Paige Dower, France Tracy, Lydia Erickson, and Susan Kramer. Boys team members include John Michael Griffith, Jeffrey Mearns, Matt Gray, James Smith, Will Backshider, Colt Paris, Drew Frederick, Colin Kreutzer, and Ethan Schulley finished second overall. Last week's calendar clue question was, who had a desk chair that could double as a flotation device? The answer, Lyndon B. Johnson. The faculty winner was Mrs. Griot, and the student winner was Jake Whitford. Who once dedicated a book to his dogs? Today's clue, he is a Pulitzer Prize winner. Stop by the library and take a guess. NEHS is sponsoring its annual book drive to benefit the children of the Brighton Center, so bring in books appropriate for beginners to age 12. The first period that brings in the most books wins a breakfast. There will be a stand meeting today in room number 217 after school. Everyone is welcome. As you know, today is Veterans Day. We'd like to thank all the men and women for their service. Molly has more at the VA hospital. Let's check it out. Today, one in five American veterans will come home with PTSD. Of those, only 23% seek help. The VA in Fort Thomas is hoping to change that. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a severe mental condition that affects an estimated 21.7 million Americans, with most of them serving in combat. Uh, so PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder, and that's a term we hear uh, used a lot in society. It's thrown around quite a bit, um, but it's often misused, and people aren't necessarily sure as to what it really entails. PTSD develops after a person experiences a traumatic event and damages a person's natural fight or flight response to danger. Those living with PTSD will often experience terrifying flashbacks, recurring nightmares, and will have trouble sleeping or will avoid triggers that remind them of the event. Here at the Cincinnati VA in Fort Thomas, we have the majority of PTSD services for the VA in the Cincinnati, Kentucky, and Indiana southern area. We serve the patients who want to come here for outpatient, which means coming in for weekly therapy, coming in for medication every three to four months, and then we also treat the residential patients. So we have something that's fairly unique to VA, which is residential PTSD programs where people can come and stay here for seven to eight weeks. And we have a separate men's program, a separate women's program, and then the only traumatic brain injury PTSD program in the nation. I, I can say that I do um, you know, a variety of different types of therapy. I work with individuals, I work with couples, I also do group therapy with veterans. Well, I think uh, this VA is unique in that uh, we provide um, some of the highest quality of care um, of, of any program in the entire country. Um, we provide frontline evidence-based psychotherapies and medications for veterans with PTSD. Um, and, you know, we're in a great uh, community here in Fort Thomas, Kentucky, and the community is very supportive of our, of our program here. Kind of coming back and being surrounded by other people who've been through traumatic experiences, who've served in the military, kind of really gives them a sense of belonging. Lovely small town feel with access to big town events if we want to get the patients out. They love walking around town, you know, being down in that area where you've got some cute shops that they can pop into. Um, just being out and about around people can be great. So sending them to the zoo, having them go to a Reds game or a Bengals game is a good way for them to test their skills that they're going through in therapy. The levee is very popular, so it's a great place for us to take the veterans because if they feel that they're um, getting unsettled by being in a store, you can go outside and walk around and wait for your friend, and then they can join up with one another again. We also know that they tend to like the library here. It's a wonderful library that we have. We have Northern Kentucky that they can go wander around the campus. The community uh, has gotten involved with our veterans. Oftentimes we have people wanting to volunteer. Uh, we have people wanting to provide services to the veterans or, or offer donations to, to our program. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I think in those ways the community's been uh, very helpful and very outstanding.
Veterans have already sacrificed so much, but through the help of the dedicated people at the VA, they are finally getting their lives back. Thanks. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks for letting us know all about that, Molly. It's great to see what we're doing for the veterans who have done so much for us. Now to Colin. Thanks, Ezra. Attention students, do you like fireworks, awkward situations, and snakes? And come check out Highlands Theater production of You Can't Take It With You this weekend. The last show is tonight at 7.30. Tickets are $8 for students and 10 for adults. We hope to see you there. Any student council member that is making a poster, please drop them off in room 100 tomorrow. Attention freshmen, uh, mentoring group one, the red group, we will be going to graders on Wednesday right after school. We will meet in the lobby and then go as a group. If you need a ride or just have general questions, contact Laura, Macy, Chrissy, Rebecca, or Michael. Hope to see you there. Spanish Club's November meeting will be held on school this Wednesday in Mrs. Meadows' room. We will make some decisions about holiday activities so members should try to attend. Attention FBLA members, our mandatory monthly meeting will be Thursday, November 14th, right after school. Please make arrangements to attend. Winter Guard editions will be on um, Monday, November 18th from 4 to 7. Please see Mrs. Duncan if you have any questions. Attention students, looking for service hours? How would you like to meet Santa? Mrs. Walsh is looking for some students to help her with pictures with Santa at the Santa House at Moyer on Friday, November 22nd and Saturday, November 23rd. If you'd like to help, stop by the guidance office and see what Mrs. Walsh has for the schedule. Attention all riders. Who likes cash prizes? The Scholastic Writing Competition will begin accepting written portfolios and individual pieces next week and continuing through January 6th. Winners of the competition will receive scholar, scholarship money or other cash prizes. If you're interested in submitting a written piece or portfolio, please see Mrs. Dowling in room 310 after school. Jordan caught up with Maddie Roy to see what happened with the cheerleading squad this weekend. Here with Maddie Roy. Now, I hear you guys did pretty well at the in-game competition. Can you tell me more? Yeah, we, there were 17 teams in our division, and we got second place overall. And the competition was basically about... Um, there were judges that came to our Friday night football games and um, they judged our stunts, like our crowd appeal and different aspects of our cheerleading. That sounds great. Congratulations. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks, Jordan. All right, Ezra, what do you got for us? Well, tomorrow for lunch we will be having chicken fajita wrap. No, not fajita. Fajita wrap. <laughs> Bean salad. <laughs> Corn, mixed green salad, assorted fruit, milk, and dessert. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> and the other card item of the day is chicken alfredo, garlic bread. All right, Hans, we'll see you tomorrow.